Hey guys, welcome back to another video. Thank you for checking this one in. If you've been following along with me, you've just seen uh, the trip that I've been on. We've been at Jason's shop already. We've had uh, we've had a built trans put in. Hope you guys liked that video and it was informative for you guys to see. But today we're here to talk about something super special. I'm actually here with Jason himself. Jason, what what do we have going on here today? What what, what, what's coming new to market that all the L5P guys can really look forward to here? Yeah, so uh, Matt's truck already had a couple of our pipes on it. He had our intake, our coolant pipe, and our driver's side intercooler pipe um, already installed when he showed up. Um, and the main reason for the visit was to install one of our new S300 drop-in turbo kit upgrades. So this kit is is a really slick setup. What we've done is we designed an adapter that lets you incorporate the OEM turbo pedestal um, and install an S300 fixed vane turbo. So we eliminated the factory VGT. We put in a little bit larger S300, a little bit bigger turbine, a little bit bigger compressor. Um, the particular turbo that we have on your truck here is capable of 750 to 800 horse with yeah. enough fuel. Now, obviously this setup, um, you've got your other dyno videos and you talked about that. This setup, we're fuel limited, but uh, um, the turbo kit itself is what we call an S300 drop-in setup. Sure. So it drops the S300 in the exact location as a factory turbo. It's compatible with your existing intercooler pipes that you already had. It's compatible with your existing inter uh, intake. Um, comes with a new downpipe, oil lines, adapter, all the hardware, uh, new, new turbo horn. mouthpiece, yep, mouthpiece. A new, yep, the new intake horn, and then the, 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 the turbo itself, it's not your standard off-the-shelf S300 turbo. We've done some modifications to the compressor cover to allow us to uh, incorporate some of the OEM sensors um, and uh, other OEM components and allow it to drop in and use the either an OEM intercooler pipe or our upgraded intercooler pipe. Um, so people can put this in with the OEM piping. Yes, yeah, it's, so if a guy's got a stock turbo and say it blew up or took a crap on him and uh, the truck's out of warranty and he doesn't want to put a stock turbo back on, this turbo is a drop-in setup. If you've got all factory intercooler pipes, the turbo drops right in. That's great. It comes with all the necessary components, essentially, to install it on the truck. Um, another another product that we've got that we also installed while you were here is a new thing that just came out is our three and a half inch passenger side intercooler pipe. Yep. So this pipe replaces the factory plastic one, which is two piece and also only about three inches in diameter. Uh, we upgrade to three and a half. We use a high quality silicone boot at the connection to the Y bridge. And then down at the intercooler, we use a double O-ring connection instead of just a single O-ring like the factory one uses. Hey everybody, Jason Worley with Worley Custom Fab. Today we're gonna talk about our 2017 and newer L5P Duramax three and a half inch passenger side intercooler pipe. Our L5P intercooler pipe is a direct replacement to the OEM unit. The OEM intercooler pipe is constructed of plastic and is a two-piece design with a silicone boot connection in the center. Our pipe is constructed of 14-gauge heavy-duty aluminum and is a one-piece design. The OEM intercooler pipe, where it connects to the outlet of the intercooler, uses a single rubber seal design. What we've done with our intercooler pipe is used a CNC machined flange with a double O-ring seal. This provides you a better sealing surface and less likely chance of a boost leak. At the connection of the Y bridge, the OEM pipe connects with a clip ring design with a small rubber seal. With our intercooler pipe, we use a high quality silicone boot with stainless steel T-bolt clamps that connects the pipe directly to the Y bridge. The intercooler pipe upgrade is a simple install, no more than one to two hours. And best of all, you can install this pipe on a stock truck. There's no tuning required. Like all WC Fab product, it's powder coated here in house to your choice of colors. This pipe here done in our WC Fab Red. We've got over 75 different colors to choose from though, which you can check out on our webpage. This intercooler pipe is also available in a kit form with our matching high flow driver side intercooler pipe. So that wraps up our L5P three and a half inch passenger side intercooler pipe upgrade. If you got any questions, feel free to give us a call. Any comments, leave them below. Be sure to subscribe to our newsletter, our YouTube, and follow us on social media. Thanks a lot for watching. So we did a handful of upgrades aside from just the transmission and uh, looks great. It's gonna be a good run and setup, no doubt. What's going on over there in the corner? Oh yeah, over here, almost forgot. Um, so over here in the far back, we've got our new uh, OEM replacement fabricated aluminum coolant tank. So this is purely a dress up item, just yeah. like the coolant pipes. It's not giving you any horsepower gain <laughs> or any 
any benefits there really. It's more or less uh, a nice component, hand fabricated aluminum coolant tank we make here in house and it replaces the OEM plastic unit. Uh, this part is brand new. I think you might have like the third one we ever made right here. Okay. So you've got one of the originals. <laughs> um, they are available for purchase. Uh, I don't think they're on the website just yet. You'll have to call the office to order them, but they will be coming on the website here probably sometime in October. Cool. Um, so that's a nice part. Has a built-in a built-in sight glass. Yep. Um, so you can see the coolant level. Has a built-in coolant level switch, so you don't have any lights on your dash for low coolant level or anything like that. It's a it's a direct drop-in replacement, and uh, obviously you can get powder coated to match whatever else you might have under the hood. Sure. Turbo blanket is on yeah. as well. Yeah, another thing too, uh, it's not a standard item in the turbo kit, but it's an upgrade item you can purchase, which is our T4 heat blanket. Uh, the heat blankets are a really nice item. Um, they, they are what, what it sounds like, it's a heat blanket. It, it surrounds the turbo exhaust housing, which is a heavy chunk of steel, which gets heat soaked and radiates heat in the engine bay. The heat blanket is covers the whole exhaust housing, keeps the heat in, helps with turbo spool up, uh, increases turbo efficiency, and keeps the heat in the turbo, which means out of the engine bay. So it helps with underhood temperatures, and you don't got to look at the ugly turbo housing either. It's a lot nicer looking. Yeah, no, everything everything came out great. I'm, I'm definitely glad I came down here to do this trip. I only have, I don't know, maybe 75 to 100 miles on this truck between going back and forth to the dyno to get content for you guys. But uh, the drivability is there with this kit. It's a little bit different. I'm, uh, built Trans is a new world to me. Upgraded turbos are a new world to me. But uh, it's fun. It is really, really fun, and you're going to be probably surprised with the power that we're getting just on stock fuel. So, yep, I'm looking forward to it. I'm, I'm sure you're looking forward to getting these kits out, and these guys are going to have fun driving this around. So, so another thing I wanted to bring up here um, before we go, before uh, Matt heads back home, is the intake you see here on this setup was kind of a one-off deal. This isn't something that we mass produce. It's not something that we have available. Um, it was something that we did a couple of, and it works with the S&B box, but it's not it's not something that's available anymore. So I just wanted to let you all know that we are working on, uh, will be available very shortly here before the end of the year, uh, a fabricated box um, that is compatible with the, with the hood scoop port um, and will come with a new intake pipe. And uh, once we get that kit done and ready, we'll make sure Matt gets one of the first ones and he can uh, do another video on that one when the time comes. So just wanted to let you know that what you see here with this S&B box with our pipe is not something that we have available and we are working on uh, almost completed with our fabricated powder coated box design. So just wanted to throw that out there for you guys. No doubt. Well, thank you for having me here, Jason. I really appreciate it. It's been great. You guys have been very hospitality. You've been, you guys have been very hospitable. Uh, your crew is awesome here and you guys do a great job. So yeah, we appreciate you taking the trip all the way from New York. I know it was a heck of a drive yeah. for you and you've been here for about a week. So my wife's going to kill me. It was great having you. Well, she'll get over it once she sees under the hood, right? Yeah. <laughs> It was great having you though, and we appreciate it. Thank you, Jason, appreciate it. Yep. All right, everybody. All right, everybody, we're back at the dyno. As you saw earlier, we're at uh, Whirly's, got the new S369 kit in. So tonight we're here, we're trying to get some numbers published for that. So gonna put a few runs in, keep you guys posted of what's going on. I'm really excited about this kit, really excited to see what it's gonna do over the factory setting. So this whole trip's been great. It's late at night, I'm exhausted, can't wait to get back home, but I am excited for these numbers, so I'll keep you guys posted. So part of this test tonight is to find out the limiting factor, um, whether it's gonna be air or fuel. So with the new turbocharger in, I'm uh, figuring out we are probably not gonna be lean on air, probably gonna be more lean on fuel. So um, these results will tell. As you can tell in the first video, the stock charger was good up to about 615 horse and then we started running out of air, so. Let's see what the S369 does. I'm excited to find out.
just picked up at least 65 horsepower over stock just with a more efficient charger. So I'm at uh, like 680 right now and 1440 foot pound of torque. Gonna have some tuning revisions and then we'll see what's gonna happen on the second run. So I'll catch you guys on the second run. have been made we're gonna see what some of the changes are I think a little bit of fuel was added I'll find out and I'll get back to you can't reveal the source final numbers are in we cracked the 700 mark I want to thank my tuner who's going to remain anonymous but uh, he's elite for sure <laughs> can I say that <laughs> anyway 700 horsepower rear wheels stock fuel I'm extremely happy um, this kit is very impressive so uh, this trip has been well worth it, very fun. So I'm going to wrap this one up here, guys. I'll see you on the next one. See ya.